Motivation and Young People by Keith Kennedy, Lisa Moran, Brian Gavin, Jason Kerwin and Fiona Carney. Yes, Matt's first thing. Mr. Walsh won't believe I solved his puzzle. The first creature we meet is Sarah. With her logical brain, clearly the natural habitat is the mathematics classroom. Oh, oh God, not this again. I have to do the homework on the bus. Walsh is going to kill me. And the second, more reluctant creature is Mike. It appears Mike's natural habitat is anywhere but the mathematics classroom. But why? The difference between our two specimens is purely down to motivation. Motivation, as defined by Anita Woolfolk, is an internal state that arouses, directs and maintains an individual's behaviour. Motivation in education is concerned with a young person's motivation to learn through a young person initiating learning activities and maintaining involvement in learning with a commitment to the learning process. Mike enters the habitat of the maths classroom. Oh, 40 minutes of this sh- Alright everyone, settle in. Today we're we'll moving on with algebra. Yes, I love algebra. I can't wait to work in a group to show off how good I am at it. Mike and Sarah work in pairs in this problem. Sarah feels an intrinsic motivation in her environment. She loves maths because she enjoys and finds the subject interesting. Sarah also feels a need for relatedness. She wants to work with others and have close emotional bonds with them. Ah oh, no, not algebra again. I'm so not looking forward to this. Hope I'm not working with someone today. I think I'm an idiot. Mike feels a need for autonomy. It is central to self-determination as he desires to have his own wishes of not working with someone else in the class. Mike is anxious. His feelings of self-doubt start to increase as he becomes progressively more tense. The physiological symptoms of his anxiety. His heart starts beating faster and his... His palms are sweaty and he's weak arms... Sorry, I left my iPod on. And the cognitive elements, his negative thoughts, mean Mike finds it hard to concentrate during the class. Okay, students, some of us are feeling a bit confused, so we're going to work together and help each other out. I want everybody in groups of four. At least we are not in pairs anymore. Now I can ask my friends what to do rather than feeling like an idiot. Okay, so does anyone know why algebra might be useful in our daily lives? I don't see any relevance for this topic, sir. It it looks stupid. Mike can have a huge impact on your future life. So I'm going to give you all an example. So listen up, everybody. The teacher has the opportunity to show the students why it is important, and the student value increases for the topic. I hate to agree, but Mr. Walsh has a point. It is kind of relevant. Sir, does that mean the roots are equal? How does she understand this? Excellent, Sarah. This is... Anxiety is both a cause and effect of poor learning. Researchers have consistently reported a negative correlation between virtually every aspect of school achievement and a wide range of anxiety measures. So what effect does this have on Mike's motivation? Let us ask an expert in the field, Carol Dweck. The expectancy D7 value theory of motivation takes into account both the behaviourists' concern with the effect or outcomes of behaviour and the cognitivists' interest in the impact of individual thinking. According to this theory, motivation is seen as the product of two main forces, the individual's expectation of reaching a goal and the value of that goal to him or her. If either of these products are zero, then motivation will be zero. Mike's teacher has explained the value of maths to the class. Mike knows he needs it to get into college and knows how important numeracy is for many careers. But his uncontrolled anxiety leads to very low expectations of success in maths. Value times zero expectancy of success means his motivation is zero. A teacher strategy could be specific growth mindset talks with the students. My experiment on 373 students over two years clearly demonstrated the beneficial effect of mindset intervention on motivation. That wasn't as bad as I thought. Thank God we were working as teams, and I now understand algebra is somewhat relevant to me. I still feel nervous about working on my own. In this circumstance, the teacher did a good job at teaching the value of the subject, but Mike still has low levels of expectancy. Petty suggests that teachers could give examples of past students that have struggled with the same issues in the class, but have gone on to do great things, or even have past students come in to talk to the class. Let's move on now. Oh no... It's now 9.40am and time for PE class, and there is a sudden change in the behaviour of our subjects. Mike is excited, passionate and eager to get going in PE class. However, Sarah doesn't have the same feelings as she drags her beer bag behind her. Quickly everyone, get your gear on and meet me in the hall in four minutes. Quickly! Yes, I love badminton. Great. Today we're going to play badminton, guys. I'm going to split you into pairs. The teacher starts to split the class into pairs, having a boy and a girl in each team. But sir, can I please go with my friend Anna? Please! I really don't want to play. I don't like badminton. Please, sir. Sarah, you don't have an option. You have to listen to me. Off you go and start your first round of badminton. In this scenario, we can see that the teacher does not take into consideration the student needs, which will have a negative impact on her motivation. Petty suggests use of Maslow's pyramid when it comes to a student's needs. 
Straight away, the teacher shows no respect for the pupil's situation, which could lower self-esteem levels. When learners can make choices, they are more than likely to believe that the work is important, even if it is not fun. In contrast to this, controlling environments tend to improve performance, but only for a short period. When learners are pressured into tasks, they often seek the quickest, easiest solution. Unbelievable. Double P. This is where I can really shine and show people in my class what I can do. Mike is feeling an extrinsic motivation where he is motivated to perform to his class of peers, in an activity that will reward him respect. It is very obvious that Sarah is not enjoying her time in physical education. We must therefore ask ourselves the question, why? Evans' research in 2006 tells us that girls have low participation in P classes. Girls felt they would not be as good at sport as boys, and would therefore be embarrassed as boys would skit them. There was a lot of peer pressure in physical education classes, and not only does the performance of a feminine identity involve looking right, but also being a competent sportswoman. Ten minutes have gone by, and Sarah is half-heartedly playing a round of badminton. Just can't wait to get out of here. I don't understand why boys take this so seriously. It doesn't even matter. And it's so horrible in the silly tracksuit pants. I just want to go inside. Girls have an added pressure of looking feminine in P. Body image and self-image is another factor that influences the low participation of girls in P. Another concern often mentioned by girls is their not being able to participate in physical education without wearing proper gym attire. The competition commences. Sarah is ready to cry. She's getting little engagement from the competitive activity. Data clearly shows that a key factor affecting the enjoyment of P for many girls was the focus on competitive team sports. And Evans relates this to the fear of inadequacy associated with inhibited intentionality. 20 minutes later, and the time is up. Okay, everyone, let's go. Time is up. Can everyone place their badminton racks back in the stories, please? Go inside and change and move on to your next class as quickly as possible. Yes, that's over for another week. I hate PE so much. Oh, I love it. I don't want to go back to class. That's so boring. Chorney and Whites claim that promoting classroom community and establishing a safe and caring learning environment are other key components in ensuring that all students feel welcome and wanted in every physical education setting. According to Penny, embarrassment is also a feeling that affects performance in PE. In general, girls who are competent games players welcome the opportunity to play in mixed sex teams as they saw playing with and against boys as increasing their competitive element of the game, providing them with more challenges. Similarly, Nevin and Al find that there are several factors affecting girls' participation in PE. The weather was identified as an environmental factor that influenced girls' experience of PE, with poor weather leading to a negative experience and decreasing motivation to participate for some girls. Maslow's theory predicts that students learn from challenging goals, active learning and effective feedback on the extent to which their goals have been met. Abraham Maslow, in his need theory, claims that gratification is the most important principle underlying all human development and motivation. It is important that all young educators realise this and implement it in their classrooms. Now we shall examine Mr. Walsh's reaction to Matt's class. Thanks, David. I thought Mike responded really well today in the group work, but, but perhaps in future lessons I could raise Mike's expectancy of success by using competition more carefully in the classroom. Maybe Mike would respond positively if my teaching methods were more active to promote his curiosity to solve person, personally relevant problems such as relating to maths to sports. Introducing weekly performance would allow me to give effective targeted feedback to any student who struggles to understand a given topic. Looking back at my PE class, I should have listened to Sarah's needs. She felt really uncomfortable in PE today, and looking at Maslow, he suggests that I should listen and build her self-esteem levels. I must apply his methods to my practice in the future. I really have to stop the boys being so competitive so the girls can start enjoying PE again. We should not measure motivation in young people strictly in terms of academic achievement. Motivation is important because it contributes to achievement and can itself be a learning outcome, according to Ray. 1992. Thank you to David Attenborough and Carol Dweck and to the pupils and teachers involved. This has been a collaborative project between PME Mathematics and Physical Education Students at UL.